okay and then teachings relating related to dating all young people should learn these teachings even before they date so they should learn it uh, so now uh, before this A B C D are general teachings and here now is what we should teach the people this is what we should teach the people so uh, first all young people should learn these teachings even before they date and even children they should learn the part of having no sex uh, and then and then for young people they should understand uh, different things okay number two sex is joining two persons into one flesh first Corinthians 6 16 or do you not know that he who is joined to a harlot is one body with her for the two he says shall become one flesh so um, when we are joined to a harlot to a prostitute and then we are one body with her so we should not find look for a prostitute and because the two persons will become one flesh so we should not have sex with anyone just for fun sex is only for marriage it's only within the marriage so sex before marriage offends the Lord and can ruin our life it will give the devil a foothold it will make God angry it can ruin our spiritual life our clear conscience the trust of other people our relationship with people and with the church God's plan in our life and our future so premarital sex uh, will offend the Lord make him angry and also give the devil a foothold the devil can attack us uh, through that and it will make God angry and can ruin our spiritual life it, because the person then will feel guilty uh, for a long long time or even for his whole lifetime it will ruin his spiritual life although if he repents and trusts in Jesus again he can restore the relationship but still there is a black mark in his life and uh, and also something are not reversible for instance the person is not a virgin anymore that's not reversible and also uh, it will leave a mark in the conscience of the person and affect our clear conscience that person would when he remembers that he would feel guilty and then the trust of other people that other people won't trust him anymore and our relationship with people and with the church uh, the relationship with people and with the church will, will be ruined and God's plan in our life and our future so it will ha affect us in many ways okay for and many men give fake love to get sex and women give sex to get love and many men seek more body contact and sex in dating and women want body contact for comfort and love so so many men want sex just for for the enjoyment and so this is something we want to watch out that we want to be very careful that men has to learn that if they have sex with women they don't gain something they lose a lot of things they lose many things and they will lose the favor of God they will lose the plan of God so we don't want to uh, uh, the one to seek a sexual relationship be before marriage and it's, it's a fact that many men would say to women and say uh, uh, if you love me then you want to have sex with me if you love me then you kiss me and hug me and hold me tight and let me fondle you and so all this is uh, the word of Satan if you know I say to all women all girls if someone says that to you and say if you love me then you have sex with me then you say well this person is not a godly person then you want to say no and leave the person so I hope we have this courage and say God has a wonderful plan in my life whether I'll have a good marriage or a good single life we can have a good single life okay number five when people kiss hug so this is what we teach people too kiss hug or fondle each other they can be easily aroused and want to have sex so Christians should avoid having intimate body contact with people so we understand that when people fondle each other then they are aroused and they want to have sex uh, even a strong Christian at that time will give in to the temptation so we want to avoid that and at that moment when we wake up we, we just want to walk away okay we should stop this we should not continue and then 
once a person have intimate body contact they want to do that every time and they, they every time they think of uh, seeing each other they always think of sex so we don't want to be just uh, be con you know uh, be connected with sex when people just they are just connected with sex then every time they see each other they just have sex and then they don't communicate they don't talk they don't build up the relationship they just have sex and after a while they will get sick of it they will feel tired they will feel guilty number six some people can take advantage of others by touching the body inappropriately inappropriate inappropriately sorry inappropriately we should say no and report such behavior to our parents pastors or police so that these people will be stopped so now some people want to take advantage of other people by touching them uh, in an inappropriate way we want to stop that and want, if the person still want to do it then we want to report it to stop this person because this is this is a serious sin seven people should be taught the difference with, between male and female so males can learn to care about peop people listen to people express themselves and communicate with people and females can learn to manage the emotions and learn to guide people to understand them and communicate with them so this is not just communicating with a dates dating partner but with anyone so males should learn to care about people they should learn to care about the family members the church members uh, uh, anyone they come across they want to care about them and listen to them and express themselves that they can talk about themselves and share with them and communicate with them and then the female want to learn to manage their emotions now male need to learn that too and learn to guide people to understand them and very often women like the, uh, the men to understand her that she wants her him to guess you know guess what I'm thinking now guess what I want she wants him to be able to guess what she wants now if the man cannot guess the woman should tell her and guide her so that he will understand her so the woman will get satisfaction when the man can guess what she likes because then she knows that the man pay attention to her but very often men don't pay enough attention so she, she should guide him to understand her and guide him to let him know that what she likes him to do how can he communicate with her how can he listen to her and respond to her so this is something that should be teaching about communication so teaching about the difference of the two sexes and about communication and practice that now some people say church is just about relationship with God why should we train people to communicate with people now when we love God we want to love people too when we do evangelism when we build up people's spiritual life we need to build communicate with people we need, need to listen to people when we share the gospel with them and these people tell us their problems we need to be able to understand them and respond to them and and care about them and and guide them to solve the problem so this is something we need to do even as a Christian to uh, to do evangelism or to build up other people's spiritual life or when we lead cell groups or when we teach Sunday school or teach a class or when we share the message we all need to understand people so this is something the church should train people to be able to communicate and share about themselves and then eight so these are things that people should be taught in the teaching related to dating so we should have teaching about this about uh, dating that people should attend people should be taught the importance of following God's perfect plan God has a perfect plan for every person if we love and obey God we can enter his perfect plan and our whole life will be blessed so people should be trained to understand God's will and then when they understand God's will then they want to be to discern God's will in the marriage because marriage is the most important uh, decision on earth because it will affect the whole person a decision for a job you know we can change the job later but decision for marriage will affect a whole lifetime 
So it's very important decision on earth is whom we marry and how we relate to the person. So Psalm 139, 16 to 17, all the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts. God, how vast is the sum of them. So God has all the days ordained for me were written in God's book. And then you have precious thoughts toward me. And Romans 12, 1, offer your body as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve God, what God's will is, its good and pleasing and perfect will. So we need to offer our body as a living sacrifice and do not conform to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of our mind. And then we can start to discern, to test God's will, to know God's perfect will. So we all need to learn to follow God totally so we can understand God's will. 9. God has a wonderful plan for our days. He would also have a plan for our marriage. If we submit to God, God will provide the best spouse for us. So we don't need to hunt for a spouse. We just submit to God and develop our life in godly ways. Then God will arrange for us to meet the spouse arranged by Him in the right time. When He provides the best spouse, we still need to love our spouse in order to enter God's perfect plan. So if God has a wonderful plan for our life, He would also have a plan for our marriage. So if we submit to God, if we obey Him, love Him, obey Him and serve Him, He will provide the best spouse for us. The person who loves God and serves God, God will honor this person and this person is very important and God will prepare someone that will be helpful to him, that loves him and helpful to him. So especially for people who wants to serve God, it's very important you find the right spouse from God. I have known before someone who really has the heart to serve God and he is very talented. He learned Greek and Hebrew from on online uh, courses and he was prepared to go to the seminary. And then he came across a girl in a, in a church and this girl has psychiatric problem. And he thinks that by marrying the girl, he would bring healing to the girl. But marriage is not a place to bring healing. Marriage is for two persons to be connected and then build up each other. It's not a place for healing. If he wants to bring healing, he should do it before marriage and, uh, and not to use marriage as a method. And what happened was, and then he married her and then he was so bothered by her that he could not go into a study for the ministry anymore because it was a very, very difficult uh, relationship to be married to someone who is psychiatric and he suffer a lot actually anyone who is emotional very sad very angry the person must learn to handle his life his emotions his emotions before he should consider marriage if not after the marriage it would be painful for both persons because no one can stand someone who is always angry and then this person who is always angry will also suffer because the other person uh, finds it very hard to love her or him. So we want, to, uh, we want to let God guide us and don't hunt for a spouse. Let God guide us. So we submit to God and develop our life, our life in God's way. So we develop a, a life by loving God, loving people, caring about people. Uh, uh, caring about each person and also doing ministry and then in the process God will guide the right person to be attracted to us and then sometimes there are more uh, you know other people who are not uh, God's choice who are attracted to us then we discern if this person is the right person so we want to uh, discern the person don't just accept anyone who wants to be our girlfriend or boyfriend now before I marry my wife now, her name is Shirley, 
and I uh, I asked God for guidance because at first I thought I would stay single and then I got I asked God for guidance I said to God if it is your will please uh, make this happen but if it's not God's will please stop it with your almighty power and also help us to uh, build up each other and please let me see the evidence that she's the right person and I took a long time we took 11 months to find out if she's the right person and uh, also I took her to missionary trips to see how she adjusts your missionary trips I want to find out if she is suitable the suitable wife for me so that's what uh, I did I did not just rush in the relationship and before that I did not involve with her romantically I just relate to her like a friend we want to communicate and uh, discuss different things and talk about different things and care about her and and uh, and she cares about me but we don't develop a dependence on each other because once we have the dependence and the romantic feelings then it's very hard to separate so when we are still seeking God's will we should be open to the possibility that we might have to split so we submit to God and develop our life in God's way then God will arrange for us to meet the spouse arranged by him in the right time when he provides the best spouse we still need to love our spouse in order to enter God's perfect plan so if, even if we marry the right person but we don't love the person it will still uh, ruin the, uh, the plan of God okay 10 God has arranged that some people remain single now peop some people don't like that but actually we can enjoy God and enjoy helping people relating to people enjoy ministry and remain single it's not you know we don't have to submit to the society that people have to get married single people can also enjoy life and enter God's perfect plan 1 Corinthians 7 33 but he who is married cares cares about the things of the world how he may please his wife 34 the unmarried woman cares about the things of the Lord that she may be holy both in body and in spirit but she who is married cares about the things of the world how she may please her husband so here Paul says that when a person marries then he would cares about the things of the world and cares about how to please a wife or husband but if he is single then he can cares about the things of the Lord so Paul here talks about the advantage of being celibate to being single so I think as Christians we should not say all people should get married we should educate them and say that even if you don't find a spouse a Christian spouse it is okay we can still enjoy life there is social pressure to get married I know that in Africa the pressure is much higher in Hong Kong the pressure is very low in some countries pressure is high some countries pressure is low uh, in Hong Kong there are many single women and uh, people don't feel bad being single and people don't ask people uh, when are you gonna date when are you gonna get married people don't ask that question except sometimes the parents ask that question but Christians tell them uh, uh, if I don't find a Christian uh, I will not get married and then or I don't have not found the right person I won't get married and so there are many single Christians uh, that I've seen in Hong Kong if God's plan is that we remain single we need to learn not to be affected by people so when they ask us we we'll say I'm very happy to be single and I can serve God better I can do things better when I'm single it is better to be single and used by God than to suffer in a bad marriage so some people rush into marriage and then they suffer because of that okay and then 12 because our marriage can affect our whole life if a person comes across someone who might be the person God has chosen to be a spouse he should seek God's will and seek the help of pastors or mature and wise leaders so because this is something so important we should seek the help of pastors so we should educate this to the people and a pastor's job is not to stop it the pastor's job is to seek God's will is this God's will for them 
and the pastor should guide them to understand. For instance, if the uh, the man and the woman cannot relate, they cannot communicate, and and they they don't have the same heart, then he can advise them to consider uh, to reconsider whether they they are suitable. And a person should not. And also they should hear from God, you know, God will guide them and God will give them peace to guide them. And people whom uh, they should not get married, they will have many times a thought come into them. Maybe this is not, right, not the right person. There are so many problems that this thought would come into them. They should consider these thoughts because they must have seen some problem in a relationship. A person should not start with developing romance and dependence on the dating partner. Dating is a time to find out God's will and whether we can develop a healthy relationship with the other person. Once a person develops romance and depend on the other person or have intimate body contact, it's very hard to stop the relationship, even when the person finds out that it is not God's will. So we must not start developing romance and dependence on the other person or, or intimate uh, body contact or having sex and dating because dating is a time to find out God's will and whether we can develop a healthy relationship with the other person so in a dating process is to find out whether the, uh, they are suitable for each other and once a person develops romance and depends on the other person or have intimate body contact then it's very hard to stop the relationship even when the person finds out that it's not God's will. For instance, if someone has sex with the other person, then he should marry the person. But then, if he finds that they really cannot relate, then they should learn to relate. But after they have sex, they should still get married. 14. Both persons have to be have an agreement not to have intimate body contact. Once there is intimate body contact, Dating will become a time of sexual intimacy instead of developing love. Love is care for the other person, not sexual love. And communication, and it's easy to fall into premarital sex. So both persons, when they are dating, should have an agreement not to have intimate body contact. Not to kiss or hug or fondle. Once there is intimate body contact, once they have one level, they kiss and then they want to hug. When they want to hug, they want to hug longer. When they hug, then they want to start to fondle. And then when they fondle, they become aroused and then eventually they have sex. So this is, uh, this is a routine of many people. And also, people who are dating should not date in a place that they are alone. They should date in public places. They should not date in a home. And then Christians can date in a way in activities in the church that they can relate to each other and communicate with each other in the church setting. Then, then they can, uh, then they are, you know, that have the safeguard against premarital sex. So they should develop love, that care for each other and bless each other and and uh, help each other and good communication okay and then instead of falling into premarital sex 15 if one person insists on having sex and threatens to stop the relationship if there is no sex then the dating relationship should be stopped so if usually it's the man who threatens if you don't have sex with me I will uh, I will not date you anymore then the woman should go away you know, don't be controlled by a person like that. If he, she has sex with him, he will suffer. Firstly, he might leave her when he sees another woman. And after having sex, then he will start to control because then he will, uh, he will just let the woman chase after him because the woman will keep saying, when do we get married? I'm having a child now. I'm pregnant now. What happened? And then he, she has to run after the man. And then the man will run away from her. So, so all girls and women should not have premarital sex. 15. Uh, okay, 16. If a person flirts with other people, flirts means, you know, do things to attract other female or people of opposite sex. He's taking dating as a game. 
and a dating relationship with such a person should be stopped. So if a person is flirting with different people, trying to attract different people, then the dating partner should stop it, should tell him uh, this is not right and then should stop the dating. So when we find serious problem in the person, we should stop dating because it will affect our whole life. And we find that the person doesn't listen at all, doesn't uh, care at all, then we should not get married. But there are many people who are afraid to be single, so they, they just force themselves to marry such a person. 17. There should be teachings on how real love is, uh, what real love is. What is real love? To care for people, to appreciate them, to, to really say you have done good things, to please them, make them happy, to help them, to build up their life, to listen to them and communicate with them, to connect with them, to really um, you know, build up relationship and to do good things to, to them. So loving people is also loving oneself. To love one spouse is building up uh, two lives, two persons' life. Ephesians 5.28 so husbands ought to love their own wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. So they should learn to love everyone around them and their dating partner. So they should learn uh, um, for people you know, that in a, in a course on dating. So they should learn to communicate with people, uh, communicate with people in ordinary things you know, like sharing about different things and also communicate with people how to solve problems. If two persons have problems relating to each other, how can they solve the problem? How can they listen to the other person and, and uh, relate to the other person? Now we can have more training of that, of how to communicate and relate to people and resolve problems together. 18. There should be teaching on listening, saying words of grace and words of law gently and how to solve problems with someone. We're starting now and then I'm going to answer a couple questions. First question is, what's the difference between dating and courting? Now courting has the sense of chasing after a woman to be able to marry her. Now Christian dating is not chasing after the woman to marry her. Dating is finding out about the person. That the activities should not be uh, you know, the activities should be trying to communicate uh, to to be able to care for the other person, to solve problems instead of just uh, having fun. You know, I mean, of course, there can be fun, but don't make fun the high priority. The high priority should be building up the relationship and communicating. And it should not be in a, uh, a place that only two of them are present because then there will be temptation to have sex. So it should be in a public place, uh, out in the public. And then to build up the relationship and to communicate. And if, for Christians dating is, they want to have an agreement to find out God's will. It's not necessary, uh, necessary that they have to get married. If it's not God will, God's will, they agree that. If it's not God's will, then they will separate in good terms that they can still see each other and treat each other nicely and uh, stay being friends, but not to get married, agree not to get married. So I, uh, now, not many people are willing to do that. So we, we want to be able to do that, that we want to say this is a time to find out God's will. It's not a time just to chase after the woman. Okay, and then um, and there is another question. What, uh, that, um, how can I, we advise someone who dates and a partner deserts him or her every time he or she dates or before they get married? Now that means there is something wrong with this person. He cannot relate to someone uh, he cannot uh, care about people, he cannot um, uh, listen to people because he cannot build up the relationship. So we can find out from the person, what happened? Why, uh, why do the other people distract you? So in order for a person to be able to 
uh, suitable to be suitable for marriage there are many things he need to work on now, many people don't understand this they think that any adults two adults can get married that's not true because a person in order to be suitable for marriage first he need to be able to, uh, to love people to care for about people to listen to people to respond to people to build a relationship and to make the other person feel loved and cared for and um, to be able to solve problems to have emotional stability uh, to be able to solve problems in relationship and in family he should be able to solve problems in family and uh, he should have a good relationship with God so a person should be mature before he would consider dating and marriage so if a person has problems some people you know never listen to people always yell at people get angry and make people feel uh, frustrated with them and they are frustrated with people these people when they date people would dislike them they and then some people are very controlling they want to control the uh, their dating partner they want always want to do something to make them do something they want and this is undesirable because in, ma uh, in marriage it's not one person controlling the other person now in some cultures in some cultures the husband controls the wife now in biblical teaching it's not controlling the husband should love the wife so much that he's willing to give his life for her as Christ has loved the church and give his life for the church so in a Christian setting obedience is not unconditional it's the husband will love the wife and the wife will submit but at the same time the, there should be mutual submission if you look at uh, Ephesians 5 21 and 22 5 22 talk about the wife should submit to the husband but 5 21 says that there should be mutual submission they submit one to another so the husband should listen to the wife and listen to her needs and respond to her needs it's not just just telling her what to do just forcing her to obey so uh, I hope we all understand this okay now if you have any more questions you can send to me and uh, maybe some people say this is too difficult to teach the people because the people won't accept it the people just want to have sex in the dating now or some pastors just don't care you know how the the uh, the young people they relate to each other they play with each other and then they have sex and they don't care about that what happened is then this is not a godly uh, group and then what happened is it will open uh, the open the opening to the devil that the devil, devil will come in and and destroy these two persons who are dating and also destroy the church so Christians pa uh, pastors should educate the people so that people won't give the devil a foothold there okay so here we talk about communication this is very important to say words of grace to people more now words of grace would be would be like this now I hope you all understand I'm online now okay s things like I care about you I love you I appreciate you I appreciate what you've done you're precious and I thank you and you're very helpful you have done well you're great you have tried very hard I notice your improvement you have impacted impacted my life you have many gifts and many strengths God likes you God will use you greatly so we say things that make the other person feel accepted feel appreciated the person feels he or she is important so these are words of grace that means it's pouring blessing upon their life and we should all learn to say this now some people respond to me by saying we never say things like this we don't say things like this here well the Bible uh, the Bible have uh, words like this even Jesus said if you do you know if a, if 
if you give a cup of cold water to a little one, you'll not lose your reward. So Jesus is saying, if you do a little thing, I appreciate you and I will reward you. And then Jesus also said, He who serves me, the Father will honor. So the Father will honor you and we like you. And, we, uh, and then if someone uh, repents, the whole heaven will rejoice for him. So in uh, the words of the Bible is full of encouragement. Basically, words of grace is encouragement, giving people hope instead of just telling people what to do. Now, many people think uh, telling people to do is words of grace. It's not. Telling people to do is words of instruction. Now, we should give words of instruction, but we should not give it all the time. But we should say words of grace all the time. And then say words, how to say words of law gently. Uh, so we can explore and guide, you know, find out how can we solve this problem. Do you think, do you think our relationship can improve? Do you think our relationship can improve? So this is finding out. Do you think it can improve? Do we want to have better communication with me? Can we work on this? So this uh, exploring, guiding. Uh, do you want to uh, have a better relationship? Do you want to have better communication? Do you want to understand me better? Can I understand you more? So this is using questions to guide the other person. Teaching. And then it's better to use questions too. Isn't it better that we can talk positively? Can we talk positively? Can we appreciate each other more? Requesting. Would you help me wash the dishes? I really appreciate if you would help me. And then rebuking. We still need to rebuke if someone does something wrong. But we want to say in a gentle way, when you talk like that, how do you think the people will feel? How do you think I will feel when you talk like that? Uh, so we can ask questions to let the person know that this is something wrong. So these are words of lo the law because we still need to handle problems. We still need to uh, tell each other what to do. But we want to say it gently. Instead of saying, you have to wash the dishes. Why didn't you do this? And you have been terrible. You didn't answer my question. You know, these are words that will hurt the other person. So we don't want to ever hurt the other person. Now, some people have the habit of hurting people when they talk. And what happens is it will ruin the relationship. It will ruin the uh, family ruin the dating and ruin the church when we just telling people you have to do this and uh, you're terrible you didn't do well instead we can say when you do this God is very happy with you I'm very happy that you're doing this and and God is happy with you and he'll bless your whole life okay and then motivates people to obey God's law by God's grace so we motivate people to change by saying God loves you, God cares about you. Whatever you do for Him, He's very happy. So God is happy whenever you pray to Him. So that's how we encourage people to pray. God is happy to bless you. When you pray to Him, He's very happy to bless you. God always listens to our prayer. He, he hears our prayer. He knows we are praying. He, he listens in, uh, to us. So we can pray with confidence. We can pray to Him with confidence that He will hear our prayer. He will respond to our prayers. And God knows your need before you pray. So before you even pray, He already knows what you need. So you don't, keep, you don't need to keep telling God what you need. You can keep praising God and loving God. But we don't need to keep asking God to give us money or prepare, uh, prepare for us a spouse. God knows our need. Five, when, we, when you love God, He will raise you to a high level. So God will use you greatly. So do you want to go to a higher level? Do you want to be used by God? And number six, when you obey God, He will remember your good deeds and will reward you great, uh, richly. So whatever, whatever you do for God, God is very happy and He will reward you. So are you, uh, will you be uh, willing to serve Him more, to, to pray for people, to serve the church? And when you help someone, God is very happy that when you help someone. So we... We train our people how to communicate with words of grace and words, how to say the words of the law gently. Okay? 
and then we guide our spouse or children to change with God's grace. I'd like to have a better relationship with you. So I'd like to have the relationship. Do you think we can have a better relationship? Imagine how it will be when we have a better relationship. How can we have a better relationship? I like it very much when you help me. So we, we guide them. Can we have a better relationship? How can we have a better relationship? How can we listen to each other be uh, better? Uh, did I listen to you? Uh, would you like to hear my heart more? I'd like to know more what's in your heart. And so we want to guide people so that we can communicate better. Now this is something very important to learn. It's something you need to practice. If you have questions about this, you can ask me. You can ask me about situation, how to apply this. Uh, this is not easy. For instance, we want to say to people, um, you know, if they have problem relating, then they can say to each other, um, do you think we need improvement in our relationship? And how can we improve? How can we, you know, I just said something Do you. Did you hear what I said? Do you understand my heart? Do you want me to explain more? Can you tell me what I just told you? So these are ways that we can guide the people. And then in positive communication, we don't want to remind people of their bad behavior. Don't accuse them, you know, to change them. Give them positive reinforcement. Now we can ask, okay, um, uh, how can we improve the relationship? How can we talk positively? But if the person keep talking negatively, we can say this. Do you think what you said is negative or positive? Do you think, how do you think I would feel? How can we improve on that? Uh, what is another way of saying it? So we can guide a person to change instead of saying, you're always yelling at me, you, I don't, I cannot, I don't want to hear you, I don't want to see you. You know, many people talk to each other like that, okay? And then they need to also learn to solve problems with people. So when people date, they learn to solve problems. So discern what the issues are by asking questions and listening. So. Uh, if the two of them have problem relating. So uh, did you notice that we get angry easily? So that communication is after they have problem, you know, the next day when they calm down and then one person can ask the other person, I noticed that we have been arguing easily. So what can we do? How can we work on it? Uh, what are the source of the problem? So uh, did you notice any problem? So discern what the issues by asking questions and listening. And then listen and respond to the feelings and needs of the person involved. So if the person says, every time I talk you get angry, every time I talk you don't listen to me. And then we can ask them, okay, what did you say and then I didn't hear you and then I got angry. Uh, if I got angry, please, I'm sorry for, for that. Uh, so what did you say and then so we want to, each person want to work on it and how to say it in a positive way, not to offend people, but to, to help each other, to relate to each other better and then to be able to solve problems. So uh, last time when I try to invite you to talk about some issues and we haven't been successful talking about our issues, can we talk about some of our issues now? Can we try to... Uh, bring out this issue and then talk about it and see how we can improve. So this takes skill to be able to bring out the problem without accusing. And then three, invite him to analyze the problem and to think about how to resolve the problem by asking questions. So invite him to analyze the problem. So what are the problems? What are the issues? How can we resolve this? Is it workable? Uh, what can we do? Uh, do you think we can do it? And never accuse. So we can ask, do you think this is right? And what is the right thing to do instead of saying you're wrong? You did something wrong. So um, solving problem with people basically is we guide them to see the problem and then ask them, to, do they see a problem? Do you want to solve the problem? Do you want to work on it? Can we, how can we communicate better, how can we work this out better, and how can we talk to each other nicer, uh, do you want to tell me what you, is in your heart, 
I'm willing to tell you what's in my heart. Uh, I want to hear your heart and how can we uh, solve the problem. So we raise up, you know, we try to guide the other person to think, okay? So now we continue teaching uh, related to dating now.